Hello everyone, Erica here, Assistant Director of Rural Languages and English Teacher. Um, so the theme of our video today is to talk about vocabulary words with multiple meanings. While English is known as a language that has basically a specific word for everything to describe, there are also, uh, there's also a kind of on the flip side of that, several words that have multiple meanings that can maybe cause confusion. So I wanted to present some examples of some today to give you some ideas of some words that you might use in your everyday life that have multiple meanings. So the first one is the word tip. Now this can be either a noun or a verb. And so it, ha it has three main meanings that I could think of and that we use on an everyday basis. So one uh, popular example is when you go to a restaurant and you have to pay for the food, at the end you will pay a little extra for the service that the uh, waiter or waitress gives to you. So this is the tip. So that is one way we use tip and we can use that as a verb or as a noun. So for example, you leave a tip or you tip the waiter. So that's how we can use it as a noun or a verb. The second meaning for a tip also we use is to describe a piece of advice. So for example, if you're starting a new job and you want to get some advice from your uh, colleagues, your new colleagues, about how things go at this office or at this company, you might ask them for some tips, as in some pieces of advice that they can give you to help you adjust better to this new environment. And lastly, uh, the tip also describes the end on something. So for example, uh, we have a pencil here. This part at the very end, the small part, is called the tip. So we can use that to describe a lot of different uh, objects that have an end. So those are some of the uh, example, three meanings of the word tip. Um, also, we have the word will that I wanted to share today. That's one we can use in a lot of different contexts. So uh, will is both a noun and a verb. Uh, just like tip. So with will, for example, we see this one very commonly when we talk about uh, verbs in the future, like I will do that, you will run, he will play. This is the way we use will in the verb sense. But it also has some, some noun meanings. So for example, <clears throat> when we talk about um, someone having a strong will, it means like their, um, their character and their the desire to do something is very strong. So that's, that's what their will is. It's like this kind of force of spirit is the way we would use will in that way, um, in Afghan as a noun. But we also can use will as a noun as in a very different way to describe. It's a kind of a document that someone would prepare if they were making plans for in the case that they pass away or they die. It's a document that says what they want to happen with um, all of their possessions. Um, so for example, if they have money that they want to distribute to their children or spouse, um, or if it's like objects like their home or any other kinds of things. Um, this will is a document that has uh, a list of all of their desires of what they want to happen with their things after they die. So that's another use of the word will. And finally, last word for today is the word set. Set, again, also a noun and a verb, just like our two other words. So for example, when we talk about setting as a verb, there are two main verb meanings. Uh, one is to kind of to put or to place something. So for example, when you set the table, it means you put the plates in the proper place, you put the forks in the proper place, and that's all on the table. So you're putting everything where it should go. And so that's one meaning, uh, one verb meaning for set. Um, but we also have the verb meaning for set, meaning to kind of to go down. And what I mean by that is, for example, the most um, common example we use on an everyday basis is to talk about the sun when it sets. So, you know, at that time when basically day transforms into night and the sun goes down in the sky. This is called setting. So, and again, most often we're using this to describe the sun. And uh, finally, the last meaning of the word set that I wanted to present today is um, in the noun form. And basically what it means is you have a group of things that go together uh, for a certain purpose. So, for example, if you um, buy a um, furniture set, for example, if you're moving to a new home and you're, you want to decorate your living room, you want to have places to sit, and you buy a, a furniture set, it means these pieces of furniture that all go together. So they're probably in the same color or the same pattern or the same material. Maybe in this case, it would include like a sofa, a chair, a little table. But again, all these things are meant to go together. So we, we can use this word set to describe any kind of group of objects that are supposed to be going together or are associated with one another. So for example, if you're um, getting a, a dining set, so this would be a collection of plates, forks, knives, cups, maybe. So again, all these objects that are meant to go together to, for a certain purpose. 
So um, the, that's a wrap up of our three words for today that's with tip, will, and set. So these are words that have many meanings. So they are hopefully useful vocabulary because you can apply them to a lot of different situations. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you next week.